Hey guys, Mary Beth Temple here from Hooked for Life, and in this hopefully short video, we're gonna take a closer look at how to make these super cute mini rag wreaths. I've done sort of a farmhousey one and sort of a Christmassy one out of scrap fabric and shower curtain rings from the dollar store. Let's jump right in. Now the materials you're going to use are super easy. You're going to use some fabric that is either 100% cotton or this is a poly cotton. I am basically using scraps out of the closet, but you're going to need two pieces that are each eight and a half inches wide by 10 inches tall. You're going to need some shower curtain rings. I got these at the dollar store. There's 12 in a pack for $1.25. And then you're going to need something to hang your ornament with. This is 16 inches of some teeny tiny rickrack, which I had laying around. And the other thing that I have been doing, and we'll look at why in a second, is I have been using um, finishing spray or spray starch or something like that when I am working on these because it makes the little fringes stay out a little sturdier. Let's take a look at the difference between a fabric that is unfinished and one that has some finish on it. So this guy is the fabric just the way it came off the bolt. And uh, you can see it has a little bit of stiffness to it. And again, this is a poly cotton blend, but it's not super, super stiff. Now this one, I have sprayed it with the finishing spray, ironed it, and done it again. Sprayed it a second time with the finishing spray, and ironed it again with a hot iron. And it has much less uh, floof. <laughs> it's a lot stiffer. And it's not super stiff. Again, these are supposed to look sort of rag-like and rustic but this has a lot more texture to it and the little strands of the fabric that stick out from the shower curtain rings, they're going to stay a little bit stiffer with the finishing spray on it. So I, using my rotary cutter, I held my piece this way, which is again, eight and a half inches this way, 10 inches this way, and using my rotary cutter, I cut into 10 one inch strips and I got something that looks a little bit like this. So here is my shower curtain ring and here are my strips and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each strip I'm going to fold them in half with the right sides of the fabric together. Now again for this fabric because it looks the same on both sides doesn't really matter. The uh, trick however is that you want to always put your folded edge under the shower curtain loop in the same direction just because it makes it a little neater. So I'm always going under. You can always go from the top down, but whichever way you do it, you want to do it the same way every time. So there's one. Now, I have been using 20 of these strips for every wreath that I'm making. You may find you need 18. You may find you need 22. But for me personally, 20 seems to really work for me. So I'm gonna just keep going. See, I'm putting my fold underneath. I'm grabbing my two cut ends and pulling them through and I'm giving that a big tug. And what's gonna happen, you're gonna just keep putting them on, you're gonna squish them. Now when you get up here where the join is, once that join is covered, these guys are not going to want to move very much, so, but it's fine. You're gonna just keep putting all these strips in until your piece is very full. And again, for me, it's 20. And the reason, here's the reason we keep going the same way. Here's one side of the knot. Here's the other side of the knot. It looks just a little bit different. And so that's the reason I have been going all in the same direction is because I want all the knots to look the same all the way around. So here we are at 18. So like I said, you can just slide them over a little bit. Here's the last two that I'm gonna put on. Just kind of slide it over until there's room. Again, maybe you don't need 20, maybe you need more than 20. It's going to depend on your fabric. Whoops, I had more than two left. <laughs> uh, now the other thing I will say, if you don't have a rotary cutter and you're doing these with scissors, I have to say I have made some of these where the strips were not perfectly straight or they were not all perfectly the same size and you cannot tell even the least little bit. So this is a very uh, forgiving project 
and it would also be good for people to do who want to do some kind of holiday craft but maybe they're not super crafty. I'm just tightening these up a little bit. So here they are and this is what I meant about this side of the knot looks one way and this side of the knot looks the other way and this is why I make sure that I'm always putting my strips on the same way. Okay. We only have two things left to do, so I'm going to take this opportunity to say please like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that other nonsense, because nobody listens to the end of the video where I say all that. So, I'm going to do my ends, and all I'm going to do is fold them in half and cut on an angle from the edge up towards the fold. I am not super picky, I do not measure. I try and make them more or less the same size, but do I actually care? I do not, because I want these to be, again, they're meant to be sort of rustic looking. They're meant to be looking handmade. They're meant to be looking... Now, if I do something like this where they're not the same, I tend to kind of even them up when I cut my angles, just because so the angles are similar. But again, I'm not going crazy. I'm not measuring... This is meant to have a little variation, so I'm going to do that all the way around. Alright, here is my little wreath, and I have all my little points cut. And the very last thing I have to do is I'm going to take my 16 inch long piece of teeny tiny rickrack, or cord, or yarn, or trim, whatever it is that you choose to use. I'm going to tie that in an overhand knot near the cut end, but again, this is not a project that requires a whole lot of precision. And then I want the knot to sort of be buried in the back, so I'm going to hold it back there, bring my loop around, push it under that knot, and I'm just going to finesse it. I'm just going to give it a little tug, and again, is it a big deal if the end of that knot shows? It is not. But I like to sort of tuck it in the back there. Alright, and there it is in the back. And here is my completed wreath. Thanks for watching. Go make a million of these, and they're super cool for Christmas too. And always check out the blog. Thanks so much. Bye bye.